Anyway, the last week, the last more than a week, um, we have been preparing as a family to have our daughter get married. Um, so last Saturday, so seven, eight days ago, um, our daughter was married. Um, now they are in Morea, which is basically Tahiti. I've seen the pictures. It's amazing. I want to go. So if you don't see me next week, I won't be there. So it's okay. Um, but with that, so, so we titled our message, Are You Fully Committed? And so Wednesday, uh, a youth, they got a little snippet of our message today, this fly. I'm going to get them before this service is over with. There it is. That's a, I'll get them. Maybe don't record the, the message. That's fine. Um, so I asked the kids what they thought committed meant, you know, just their defi- definition of it. And so, so I had to look up a few definitions of it just to kind of see what we were at. But, but commitment, I think, is a, is a term at this point that is becoming more and more obsolete. It, it is harder and harder to find, just across the board, the level of commitment in people at times. But an, a, a commitment is an engagement or pledge to do something, an unreserved devotion bound to stand fast or hold in place. So a week ago Saturday, um, the guys were, were all getting ready upstairs to, for the wedding. And so for whatever weird reason, I am, I am a foot shuffler, all right? I just, it's just a strange thing that I do. I don't like to wear shoes very much, right? Shane, Shane doesn't like to wear shoes either. I, shoes are annoying. They, they're hot, but I have to wear shoes to church because I probably should wear shoes to, shoes to church. Or else I wear flip-flops. But anyway, I usually go barefoot. And so I'm changing out of my tennis shoes Saturday, maybe, maybe an hour, hour and a half before I'm supposed to walk Julia down the aisle. And I take my tennis shoes off to put my nice dress shoes on. And I have my socks on, and I'm just I'm shuffling my feet, just whatever. And all of a sudden, I, I shuffle my feet, and I was like, ah, what was that? I was like, ah, I think I got something in my sock. So I'm lifting my foot up, and I'm feeling. I was like, yeah, I have something in my sock. So I take my sock off, and I'm, no, there's nothing in my sock. I put my sock back on. There's something in my sock. And so I take my sock back off, and I very carefully look back here, because I can't do that very much, all right? So I look back here, there's this huge splinter in my foot. Huge. All right? Like the fishing stories that the guys have. Huge. It was this big, and my foot's only this big. But, but all of a sudden, I'm in this panic mode, and I was like, wow, this, this kind of hurts a little bit. And so, you know, the guys are still kind of going about their business, not really sure what's going on. And I'm opening up the window, and I'm yelling, hey, Ange, Jenny, I got a splinter in my foot. You guys got to come up here and get this. Well... In the middle of all that, Brandon, Brandon's mom comes up, and she starts digging it. Well, first, Brandon's dad started just digging at it. I was like, my feet are clean, I promise. It's okay. Just get a splinter out. Well, that didn't work. So Brandon's mom comes up. She's got a hold of my foot. She's digging, and the splinter just keeps breaking off. Well, then Brandon's sister-in-law, who's a nurse, I was like, oh, this is great. She's a nurse. And she comes in, and she's like, oh, I have never seen a splinter so big. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. This is great. This is a story forever. She can't get it out. All she's concerned about is hurting my foot. So then my wife comes in, and she's picking at it, and just they're not having luck. They're like, this thing is so wedged in. I'm not kidding you. It is probably this long. So then in comes Jenny, mayor. She was our day of wedding coordinator, and she's like, I don't have time for this. So... I finally got the video the other day, and she gets out these scissors, all right? Now, when I hear scissors and I'm feeling these scissors, they are like a machete. They're huge, these scissors, but they're just tiny little, almost like little sewing scissors. And she is just cutting away at this skin to get this splinter out. She's like, I don't have time for this. And they're all looking at me like, oh, doesn't this hurt? And I was like, yes, it does hurt. Absolutely does. And then she pulls this thing out, and she's holding up like this, and we're all like, oh, Anyway, I say all that because I asked her Wednesday night, I said, Jenny, I said, were you fully committed to get that splinter out? She goes, yes, I was. And she got that thing out, and it did not matter. And I was miserable 
that night when all the excitement kind of wore off and, and all that. But, you know, that is what commitment is. Like we give everything and focus on something. But we live in a self-serving, throw away, live for the moment, do what feels good society. That's what we live in. You know, it's, it's all about us. It's all about now. It's like, I want it. I want it now. We, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. It doesn't matter what we have to do. This is what we have to do with it. You know, typically, the only commitments made these days are those that are personally beneficial to us. Again, that self sitterness that we go through of like, you know, hey, what's in this for me? Kind of thing. If I do this for you, what's in it for me? So, Saturday, you know, we, we get to the wedding venue. The, the ladies got there at like 8 in the morning or 8.30, whatever time it was. We kind of rolled back in at around noon. We showed up when Chick-fil-A showed up. Um, the guys did at least. And so, you know, you go through that. And many of you dads in here have married, you married your daughters. And, and, and you've been there in those moments. And you get choked up. And you're allowed to get choked up that day. Absolutely. If you don't cry, something's off on your wiring a little bit. Um, but, but we go through all this. And, and one of the things my daughter wanted to do for us, for myself and Ethan, was to have a first look. And so... We went to the front of the house, and she comes out, and me, and me and Ethan are turned around, and she's behind us, and, you know, they're like, okay, we're going to count to three, and then you're going to turn around. And so we counted to three, and I turned around, and <laughs> I got the Andy quiver <laughs> kind of thing, and, and it just, it just, it took my breath away, and that's what it's supposed to do. And one of the things my girls have done is, is our oldest daughter has written, she wrote me a letter on her wedding day and gave it to me. And Julia wrote me a letter on her wedding day. And I get to read it because she said I could. But this is what, and I, and I want to read this for one reason. As, as parents, we are committed to raise our kids up in a godly home. There are no exceptions. There are no exceptions, but I think as we go through life, we feel that there are exceptions that we make. We get busy. We live in this self-centered world, and sometimes we feel that we don't have time to have devotion time or quiet time or pray with our kids. But I appreciated my daughter because she got it on less paper than my other daughter. And these will be in my wallets forever. That's just one of the things I've committed to doing is keeping what they wrote to me close to my heart. It says, and I won't get through it, so I apologize in advance. So get over it. You'll see me cry, and it's okay. To my dad, the first man I ever loved and the first man to ever love me. You are the best dad I could ever ask for. You have taught me so much in life and helped me grow in my relationship with Christ in so many ways. Thank you so much for all the things you have done for me and all the sacrifices you've ever made for me as I grew up. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for t protecting me through any problems I had. And thank you for always making me laugh till I can't breathe. I'm going to miss waking up every morning and laughing with you before work or all the funny things that happen at our family dinners. But I am so thankful for the family God gave me and all the fun memories made while growing up. I have thanked God so many times for blessing me with such an amazing, loving family. I couldn't imagine it any other way. Thank you for being the best dad in the world. I will always be your little girl. I love you so much. Um, you know, as, as a father, I am committed to do anything and everything needed to, to raise my kids. You know, I will never force my kids to go to church. You know, yeah, it's about going to church, but I want my kids to have the desire to want to go to church, 
I don't want to say, hey, get up. We're going, I don't want to go to church. Get up. We're going to church. Maybe that's you. That's great. That's you. That's not me. I will never force church. I will never force the Bible down my kids' throat. It's just not what I want to do. And I don't feel that that's what God wants us to do. I think God wants us to raise our kids up and commit to raising our kids up where they have a desire to chase after God and want to go and, and, and have an amazing relationship with Christ because that's what they want to do. I don't want our kids growing up to be dad's Christian. I don't want our youth, our generation that's in that portable raising up and just doing church because that's just what we've always done. We have to show up because we're supposed to. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect will. And pleasing will. You know, commitments that are made are typically to worldly things. You know, they're things that are just out of what God desires for us. You know, and a commitment is more than just a contribution. You know, we've we've talked about it many, many times. You know, our jobs, our responsibilities. As pastors are to be either here on a Sunday, at youth on a Wednesday night, and we are to equip our followers, equip the next generation, equip us in here, all right? Sundays are about equipping. Wednesdays are about equipping. Sunday mornings are about equipping. So we can get trained in here and take this, what we've got, and take it outside of these doors, outside of these walls, outside of the pavilion on Wednesday night, outside of those portables. That is our purpose. That is God's will for us to take his message outside. But sometimes all we do is we just contribute. We show up. And I'm just saying this across the board. I'm not saying this to Bayshore, right? It is just as believers. A lot of times we show up to fill chairs. We have to make sure we tithe. We have to make sure we bring our Bibles. We have to make sure we worship. Maybe we have to raise our hands. Maybe we don't. Maybe we have to get on our knees. Maybe we don't. And so we just tell ourselves, okay, that's enough. What I did was, was good. All right, I can go home and I can feel good now. And then I could do it all over again Sunday. And I think we begin to live when we live a life that is committed to Christ. That is when we begin to live. So, so Wednesday I shared a little snippet of my message just because it was a crazy, crazy week with the wedding. And so I needed just some extra time in there. So I was like, you're going to get a little bit. Then I went to Der Dutchman on Friday, and I just put all my pieces together. And then I saw the Friday ladies sitting over there. So they got a little snippet. So I feel like this message has kind of already been out there. So, yeah, I mean, they should have just passed along. But anyway, what I told them and what I told our youth on Wednesday was I said, just remember bacon and eggs. And they're like, what, bacon and eggs, what? It's like, you bringing bacon and eggs for church? You bringing it for your message? no. Some of the ladies said, you should get a pig and bring it to church. I was like, no, as cool as that would be to have a pig running around, it's like that fly. But here's what, I, here's what I want you guys to remember about bacon and eggs, all right? Maybe every time you eat bacon and eggs, maybe you'll think about it, all right? So, are we just a chicken, all right? So what I mean by the chicken is the chicken contributes, all right? Just contributes the egg. But the pig is fully committed. Right? Fully committed. All right? He's all in. It's like, I'm all in. So now you can remember, bacon and eggs. All right? So you're either a contributor or, contributor, or you're all in. You know, when it comes to living your faith out, when you're talking about that walk with Christ and what that looks like, you know, and so you can evaluate life. So maybe you're getting up and you're going to have bacon and egg. Maybe you're going to go home 
and you're going to have bacon and eggs for lunch for whatever reason. It's absolutely fine. You're going to think, you know what, maybe I should be a pig. I don't know. You don't need to look at it like that. I didn't, I didn't try and make it where uh, he said, is he calling us a chicken or is he calling me a pig? No, not at all. I'm just trying to get the point across of we're either contributing on a Sunday or we're fully committed. We're all in. We're going to show up and we're going to get a hold of everything that's said here and then we're going to take it out. We're going to take it to our workplace. We're going to take it into our families. We're going to take it into every place that we go because we know that the world we're living in is very, very chaotic. And it is just go, 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 go all the, all the time. You know, are we committed to the essential things of life? Are we committed to building a relationship with Jesus? Now, that is the only two verses that you're going to get today that's on the screen. Okay? The rest of them you have to take notes on because I changed some things up from when I put up my notes. And that is absolutely okay that I changed things up. But those last two songs of worship, I kind of stepped from here. I went back, one, because I needed to drink water because I forgot to bring water. And two, I just wanted to kind of just stand back in the back and just experience worship from a different perspective. Um, in Psalm 95, like I said, this won't be up there, but I want you guys to listen to this, and, and it's an invitation to worship God. It's, it's an invitation to fully commit and say, you know what, I'm going to fully admit to God today. I'm going to give God everything today because I haven't. I've been holding back. I've just been contributing on a Sunday. I've just been contributing. Maybe I come once a month. Ah, once a month is good. You know, we're going to sit here and go, you know what, I'm coming every Sunday. Yeah, it's one of the things that sometimes I get, not dinged for, but I just, I'm here on Sundays. I don't take, I don't take time off. Because I love to be here. I want to be here. And I'm not knocking anybody that takes time off by any means. But if I'm not here, then I'm not going to go to church. Because I can't go somewhere else. It's kind of weird. Makes it weird. I don't know. So for me, I love people. I have to be around people. I thrive around people. That's why we call it Thrive for Youth Group. Anyway, Psalm 95 says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah. I don't know how to say that. As you did that day in the desert where your fathers tested and tried me, for though they had seen what I did. For 40 years I was angry with, the, with that generation. I said, they are the people whose hearts go astray and they have not known my ways. I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. You know, what keeps us from God's ultimately, or his ultimate blessings? You know, I think it's, it's our, our ungrateful hearts, not worshiping, not submitting to God, just contributing, not committing ourselves fully to what God has in store for us. We limit what God can do to us because we're in this self-centered world, this go, go, go world. Not checking my phones, just watching my time because since Andy and Dave are not here, we can go till 3 o'clock. That's fine. No, I won't do that, I promise. Um, Philippians 3, verse 8 said, Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain 
Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 2, for I am determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know, are we, are we committed to overcoming sin? You know, where are we in life? Where are we, you know, when it's the same thing when I, when I talk to our youth? You know, what are we doing when the doors are closed? What are we doing when nobody's looking? What are we doing when nobody's around? You know, do we have that integrity? You know, to serve God, we must be committed to overcoming sin. And to overcome sin, you must absolutely want it out of your life. You know, and so commitment covers a whole bunch of areas. And what are we committed to doing? Are we committed to serving God unbelievably, giving God everything? You know, one of the things we did as a family Thursday, Friday, I can't remember what it was. I told, their, I told our kids, I think it was Thursday. I said, 6.30 in the morning, we're going to have a family devotion. We have a hard time doing devotions as a family. It is just, at times, so busy. Because, you know, I know Andy preached on it a while ago. At times, we have these little add-in things that we do. You know, well, wait, I got a little bit of time so I can pray over here. Oh, I got a little bit of time I can do this devotion. And so we did this devotion as a family. And it was basically talking about influence. It was talking about, I asked my kids, I said, who do you follow on social media? I asked my wife too. And then I asked him, have you guys ever bought anything from these influencers? You know, because these people promote things. And my wife's like, yeah. I was like, what did you buy? She's like, clothes. I was like, okay. But I asked my kids, I was like, who do you follow? And they're telling me, I was like, I have no idea who that is, you know. And, and, but at times I, I tell them, I said, there's nothing wrong to be entertained, but are we allowing it to take away from committing to what God has in store for us? Are we allowing all those things to consume us? You know, when we have all this stuff going on over here, then sometimes we'll find ourselves running out of time to be with God and to hang out with God and to have a conversation with God. Are we committed to our marriages? You know, I, I watch and I hear more and more so many struggles with marriages. You know, I watched my daughter get married a week ago, and it was amazing. It was amazing to, as they tried to light the unity candle because it was so windy, they got it lit, they came back together, and we had the opportunity as, as parents to come in and the whole bridal party to come in and just surround them in prayer, and, and to watch Brandon's dad pray over them, and I had a chance to pray over them. You know, our marriages now should be surrounded completely with prayer over and over and over, because we know that the enemy is trying to just destroy marriages, and the enemy is doing a really good job at it at times. You know, and so are we fully committed to our marriages? Are we all in when it comes to our marriages? And yes, that's us sitting in this room as well? Are we praying for our spouses? Because we should be. Husbands, are you praying for your wives? Wives, are you praying for your husbands? Because if we're not, can't really get upset when things happen because we're not doing our part. We're not praying over and over and over. You know, a lack of commitment to our marriage will break down everything else in our spiritual walk. A lack of commitment to our marriage will break, break down everything else in our spiritual walk. You know, I came across something the other day. I've got to find it here. Um, put it at? Wow, I've had so much go on between then. Hmm. I don't remember when it, when it was. Anyway, it says something along the lines of you got to get it right. A marriage is like a casserole. Only those involved really know what's going on in there. That's a casserole. Sounds about right. I think I got pretty close with it. Um, are we committed to our children? 
Are we committed to raising up the next generation? You know, are we committed to praying for those three portables that are running in full swing and are absolutely packed with kids today? Are we praying for our next generation that meets on Wednesday nights? Every once in a while, I get prayers for those. Hey, praying for you, praying for the youth. I love those moments. You know, one of the things that I've committed, been committed to for a long time is praying for the next generation and serving the next generation however I possibly can until I just can't do it anymore. And I think that will be physically when I can't do it anymore. Because one, being over there on a Sunday morning, man, they get me going. They get me fired up. Sometimes some of you guys see some of that on Sundays. Um, and I'm not going to apologize. It's a lot of fun to go hang out with those kids over there. Um, Ephesians 6, 4 says, And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Proverbs 22, 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is the kind of commitment that impresses God to raise up our children for the next generation. Lastly, are we committed to our ministry? We're all ministers in this room. It's not just myself or Dave or Andy or people that lead a Bible study or lead a small group. We're all ministers in here. We all have a purpose to go and deliver God's message. That is a minister. You know, to serve God, you must be committed to his will for your life. And if you want to fulfill your purpose, you must be committed to it. 2 Timothy 4, verse 5 says, But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Because when we're committed to our ministry, miracles begin to happen in our lives. You know, one of the things that has been so rewarding doing next generation ministries for the last 22-ish years, something along that lines, is to watch when these students have that aha moment where all of a sudden a relationship with Christ is, I get it, I understand it, I want that. That is what drives me. When we have an opportunity on a Wednesday night and all of a sudden we're, we're playing a worship music and our kids are getting choked up and all of a sudden they want to come out and they want to have conversations with us. I can go back a month or so ago. We had a Wednesday like that. I'm out here talking with a kid. They're crying. We're praying. Blake's out talking with a kid. Bra Brandon's talking with a kid. Because there are struggles in life. And if we as parents, if we as grandparents, we, we as aunts, uncles are not praying for our kids, these things that come into their lives are going to continue to eat at them and, and, and tear them down. And they're going to continue to struggle. And then all of a sudden, we're going to wonder 10, 20 years from now, well, where's everybody out in the church? Well, we haven't been praying for them. We haven't committed ourselves to praying for this next generation. So they've kind of just been forgot about. They don't have a desire to be at church. You know, God is looking for people he can trust, and God is looking for people that are committed. You know, and so that's my, that's my challenge. You know, for, to serve God, we must be committed to his will for our lives. You know, and if you want to fulfill your purpose, you must be committed to it. And that's something that you have to decide. That's nothing that we can decide. You know, we can help along the way. We can pray along the way. We can encourage along the way. But it's your decision. You know, and, and I was just so reminded about commitment. You know, and, and I knew my message was going to develop around my daughter's wedding. You know, to sit back and to listen to Andy 
prepare his message and then to listen to them exchange their vows. And I really, really wanted to get Julia and Brandon's vows from them because Brandon had said something in there and he said, I am committed to do this, I am committed to do this, I am committed to do this, I am committed to do this. Made me feel great as a father. You know, I know as parents, sometimes we miss the mark. Sometimes we feel that we don't do enough, we didn't pray enough, we didn't have enough conversations. You know, so, so why not challenge ourselves when we go outside of these doors? Because everything's fine in here. Everything's fine inside the walls. Everything's fine sitting in the chairs. Everything's fine at home for some of us. Maybe it's not fine at home. Maybe we haven't committed everything to, to Christ in our home. You know, maybe it's time for us to. You know, I, I love that that now I have two son-in-laws that I can have a conversation with. I can have hard conversations with. They can have hard conversations with me and just talk about life and talk about struggles. And I'm committed to walking alongside of them and giving everything I can to them to help them along the way. You know, and I think for us as 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 believers, we should want that. We should desire that with our kids. We should be there for one another because we're to love one another. No matter what's going on, because struggles are going to come our ways constantly. They always do. You know, and are we going to be there to help pick people up? Or are we just going to, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Because I think sometimes we find ourselves doing that. And pointing about that you shouldn't do this. And we should go, you know what? I'm going to commit myself to helping, to walking alongside of those. You know, when there's opportunities there, we should be there for them. You know, we should encourage our kids to come to church. Not force them. Encourage them. Pray for them. Pray for them when they're not around. You know, pray for people. One of the things I love that Dave has instilled in me, and I think I've said this before, is if there's a prayer need and Dave gets wind of it, he stops right then and prays. Right then. That's one of the things I've tried to do. I don't want to be a, I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to pray for you. Social media, praying for you. Because chances are if we don't stop and do it right then, we're not going to do it. Yeah, it's uncomfortable to pray. It's okay. You don't have to use fancy words. I don't use fancy words. You know I don't use fancy words. The youth know I don't use fancy words because I don't know fancy words. That's just, it's just the way it is. Praying is just a conversation with God. That's it. You know, we complicate prayer just like we complicate the gospel. It is a simple message. It is a simple commitment, but it's just making that commitment, going, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to share the gospel with someone. You know, at times we talk about our church isn't growing. Well, if we're not, and this is churches across the board. Well, if we're not growing, well, you know, are you inviting? Are you sharing the message with someone? Or are you just coming here on Sunday and you're expecting it just to happen? Because churches don't grow. And, you know, we sit here in youth ministry and people say, it's not about numbers. You're correct. It's not about numbers. But it is about numbers. We want to grow the kingdom. You know, how do we grow the kingdom? We commit ourselves to prayer daily. We We commit ourselves to getting into the word daily so that we can train ourselves so we can take it outside of these walls. That's our purpose to go and share the message, to go and make great nations. But we have to come in here to get equipped. And then we have to commit to ourselves, I'm going to do this. And it all may look a little bit different. And some may take a little bit more time than others. 
Yes, I know there's a group that will go out on a Sunday morning and they will go have conversations with, str- I was going to say strange people, complete strangers, if we get that right. You know, for me, I'm one that builds a relationship over time, you know, and gets to know someone and, and gains their trust. And then it's like, well, bam, hey, what are you doing Sunday? Hey, you want to go to church with me? It's happened. I've not been very successful with that process, but... Um, you know, we did that for years at Chili's, and I'll wrap up with this story. Um, you know, we used to go to Chili's like clockwork on Sundays after, and I think maybe I've shared this with some of you guys. Um, every Sunday, we were at Chili's. Had the same waitress or the same waitresses to the point where they would see us getting out of the car, and they would have our drinks at the table because we knew it was, they either knew it was sweet tea or it was Coke, something along that lines. And she'd have them at the table before we got in there. And we built this relationship, and there was a couple Sundays where the two waitresses fought over our table because they both wanted to, to serve our table. And I think, if I remember right, one of them asked the other at one time, because we found out later, she goes, are they rich? And I was like, What? No. It's like, why did you think? Well, because you guys dress all nice. And I was like, oh, here's the door opened up. Here's why we dress nice. And through the years and months, however long it was, of this relationship that we built, she asked me to marry her and her fiancé. And I was like, what? Oh, I don't think I can do that. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I mean, this was years ago. I was like, is that legal? And somebody's like, well, you're a notary. You can do that. I was like, that's all you need? Just stamp it? Yeah, you're done. And so I just didn't know at that time. I was like, I don't, I don't think I can. Um, but it, through all that, it was kind of funny because they ended up getting married at Miller's Pavilion is where they actually got married. Um, but through all that, we invited. We had opportunities to invite. You know, one of the things that we loved to do that just blew them away is every once in a while we would pay for a table. It's just something we liked to do when we were able to. And she just, what? Why would you do that? I just want to bless them. Really? Yeah. Why? You know, just all these conversations that we build over time. And uh, we would tip over the top if we we were able to. Um, It was just fun. But we invited, we invited, we invited. You know, kept saying, we're going to come, we're going to come, we're going to come. They never came. But it's okay. We just continued to plant seeds. You know, we were committed to to doing that over, or at least I was committed to it. That's how I build relationships. That's how I make connections, because it's easy for me to just talk to a stranger. It's just, it doesn't bother me at all. It really doesn't. My wife, on the other hand, she's, no. She's like, do you look for people at restaurants? Yes, I do. I go, oh, look, hey, there's such, it's like, stop, stop. You know, it's just what I do. You know, I guess it's just, God wired me that way so I can just strike up conversations just random people, and maybe it develops into something, and maybe I have an opportunity to invite somebody here. Um, so um, just think about that as we go. Worship team, you guys can come up.